Hey everyone, Irit here with a new video and I decided we need to paint. If you're new here, hi, welcome, my name is Irit. I'm a watercolor and mixed media artist located in Austria, in Europe, and on my channel I share my watercolor and mixed media adventures. And I have been dealing with all kinds of watercolor adjacent <laughs> projects and so I really haven't had a lot of time to actually sit and paint and I thought it was about time. So first of all, I invite you to subscribe to my channel, to like this video and leave me a comment if you enjoyed it and if you want to see more videos like this. So in today's video, I'm going to start with creating just a little sketch swatch page to kind of see how I feel about my colors today. Uh, if you are familiar with my channel, you know that I'm all about color, how it makes me feel, different color combinations, and kind of finding your color story and your color sense. So that is a huge, huge part of my personal practice and I love to share that with others because it really brought me joy and finding my way and using only colors that I love kind of changed my entire experience and really brought down those frustration levels and just brought this pure joy to my process. So I'm just showing you just a little bit of swatching. I'm quite familiar with my favorite colors, but this is a really easy way of highlighting which colors you're feeling that day. And if you have a huge palette, if you feel overwhelmed, I would say maybe start with primaries or just a couple of your favorite colors and kind of see what you're feeling today. So I'm going to do this little sketch at the beginning and then I'm going to paint uh, a larger abstract which also kind of connects with where I've been at in my headspace and in my actual space in the last weeks and months I'm gonna say uh, which is kind of redecorating or reorganizing my studio at home uh, so I just have a room I mean I don't mean I just have a room I'm very grateful that I have a room but I don't have like a proper uh, you know, atelier or something like this, but I have a room dedicated to my uh, art and I'm very, very grateful, very, very fortunate, but it is uh, indoors and has all kinds of limitations, but I have been reorganizing it. Uh, you can check out my video from last week, which so many of you enjoyed and I'm so, so happy, where I share my favorite uh, items from IKEA for artists and crafters and I'm really happy that that video was successful. So what I want to kind of guide you through my process is at this point, I'm just trying out some colors and what you want to pay attention at this stage is kind of how you feel about the colors themselves. Hopefully you've already picked a few that you absolutely love, that make you excited, that just brings you joy and kind of shine from the paper and smile at you. And now I want you to kind of pay attention how you feel about these colors next to each other, because sometimes I would absolutely love a color or two colors, but hate them next to each other. So here, for example, I'm not really feeling that cobalt teal next to my uh, beloved bright rose. So I'm paying attention to that. And the other thing you wanna pay attention to is the dosage. So how much space or real estate do you want, A, your entire colored section to take, and B, single colors or singular colors. And we'll be creating this very kind of abstract, somewhat simple uh, painting, which I look at as um, like an interior decor piece, um, as opposed to maybe, you know, like a work of art that stands on its own. I would see it as something that just brings color and um, brightness to a room 
just like a design element that is part of the rest of your design concept uh, that comes together with reorganizing my room. And I also want to mention that this was somewhat inspired by a really, really cute course on Domestica. I don't remember the name of the course, but I remember the name of the um, teacher. Her name is Geraldine Tan. She's, I want to say, a UK-based uh, doctor and interior decorator that has a love, like me, for color and kind of, I want to say, girly colors. I, I don't see that. To me, that's like a good thing. But, you know, maybe classically uh, considered girly colors. She likes pink. I like pink. So it's all good. But she has this course on Domestica. You know, you're not going to learn to be an interior designer from taking that course. But she makes some really, really excellent points. And um, I also feel that Probably or maybe because she's also a doctor, she kind of has a way of uh, organizing things and I don't know, it just spoke to me. And so she has a few concepts that I feel really kind of helped me make sense of designing my room. And I highly, highly recommend, if that sounds interesting to you, then go to Domestica. I'm not affiliated with them or anything like that. Usually their courses cost between like 10 and 20 uh, euros or dollars. And check it out. Um, it, it was just really fun. So in one of the rooms that she shows in her house, she has a large uh, piece of art that really speaks to me. It's exactly my colors. And I kind of was inspired by that piece of art to create the one that I'm going to do today. So I wanted to mention it, give her full credit. And um, yeah. So here you see me in my little sketchbook. This is a Cuddy sketchbook. It's one of the ones with a thinner paper. I don't really like it, but I have it. So I want to use it. And this is uh, putting it to good use. And the... Um, the point here is to, again, kind of see how much white space I want to have. This is absolutely a personal decision. There's no right or wrong here. Um, I would say that more white space is probably like a little bit cleaner, a little bit more modern, a little bit more minimalistic. So if those words speak to you, then maybe you should consider uh, having more white space in your artwork. And if you are not at all about that, then, you know, you can cover all of your real estate with paint and, you know, just have fun. But it's one thing to keep in mind. And I really found that to be a factor in what I would consider a successful painting. So I have found that for me, if I have some white space, I usually tend to be happier with the results. It's not the only thing, but it's just a part of many, many other things. So here you see I'm playing around. The important thing for me to look here is, again, as I said before, kind of how much do I want from each color? And again, there is no right or wrong here. Um, I just want every color that I put on my paper to be, you know, the most beautiful, exciting, uh, lovely color to me. Uh, you might look at this and think, you know, a unicorn vomited here. And I accept that. I embrace that. <laughs> but <laughs> these are my happy colors. And yeah, that's that's what it's all about, right? So that's what I'm uh, keeping in mind here. How much I want from each color. Which colors I want to place next to each other. And uh, which I don't want next to each other. And kind of a little bit about composition and white space. You might find that you need to make a few sketches like I did. I highly recommend doing that because it'll save you a lot of paper, time, frustration. So I would absolutely recommend doing small sketches. I just have done this many, many times in the past. And for the sake of making a somewhat, you know, succinct to the point video, I spared you that particular part of the process, but it usually doesn't happen like this fast. I just had a very clear idea and yeah, I've I've done this several times before in the past. So don't think it comes that easily and naturally. It's just specifically I kind of had a good idea in this case of what I wanted to do. 
Um, so I'm going to start with my star color, uh, my Holbein Bright Rose, my beloved. And I'm using another precious, my Tracy Lebenson brush. This, I love this brush. And you can see I'm painting relatively large. It's just, you know, painting larger is a bit harder to capture on screen. Um, you know, I either have to keep in mind, always be on camera, and it's just a little bit harder. So I think this one is 40 by 50 or 30 by 40 centimeter paper, maybe 30 by 40. And it's just like a good size. And, you know, if you frame it and add the Paspel 2 to the frame, you can get uh, a larger piece. Uh, of course, you can also take a picture of your painting and upload it to one of the print on demand websites. And then you can actually have it printed on canvas in much larger sizes. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Now, what I wanted to show you here is there, there is some technique that I feel really takes this kind of paintings to the next level and that attention to detail um, really makes the difference for me. So one of the things you want to pay attention to are your edges. If you're doing something like this, if you're doing some kind of like, you know, abstract, splotchy, <laughs> swatchy art kind of thing, which I love, um, you want to make sure that your edges are interesting and varied and yeah, and there are like different ways to accomplish it. Obviously, the way that you put down your paint in the first place, I realized that I really, really, really don't like working wet on wet. It doesn't work for me. I'm all about those kind of lost and found edges and having a bit more control really proved to be the right choice for me. So you can see, even though my brush is not tiny, it's also not huge. I don't use a ton of water um, and I just need some control. So all these things took me a long time to find, discover and kind of figure out what works for me. And I'm sharing it with you. Uh, so maybe, you know, it can help you in your own journey. And this, so the way that I'm kind of blurring the edges is with uh, almost dry brush. I have a cotton cloth uh, right next to my palette that you can't see in the frame. It's just I can't fit everything in the frame, but that's where I keep I keep cleaning my brush and then soaking up uh, almost all of the water and that allows me to really kind of blend those edges without creating puddles of water uh, and I can create those kind of lost and found edges where sometimes the edge is very sharp and then other times it's uh, blurry. So that's definitely one thing I'm keeping um, in mind as I'm adding my colors. The other thing you want to pay attention to, which I think makes a huge difference, is that even though, especially now at this point, I have, you know, most of my color blobs are just like one color. You want to make sure that they are not flat, that they are not completely uniformed. And the way you can do that is by adding concentrated paint to certain areas, adding some water droplets to other areas. You can lift some of the uh, color, which I will be doing, uh, or just apply, you know, very little of it in certain areas. And that will make those watercolor stains look a lot more, you know, watercolory and interesting instead of just having that like flat, blob of a color which can also look really beautiful and you know for acrylics um, it it works well in many many cases i also love that look of just shapes that are very flat uh, in finish and like very opaque but in this case i want that you know watercolory flowy look so you do have to kind of pay attention to that as you're applying the paint and sometimes you can't get the wanted effect in one layer and you have to go back and kind of enhance it. So add more 
um, layers to certain areas, lift other areas, just play around with that. But this is definitely something, especially when you're doing something that is quite minimalistic, uh, you want everything to be interesting. And this is one way of getting there. So just making sure that these blobs are interesting, textured, uh, and have variation. With um, granulating colors, they kind of do half the work for you. So for example, now I'm working on my little blob of cobalt teal, and you will see also in the close-ups, uh, I'll put them again in the end, and they are at the beginning of the video, you can just see that texture, that granulation, and even if you uh, don't frame this particular work of art, if you like take a picture or scan it and print it on something larger, all of that texture will be you know, even larger and even more noticeable. Uh, so uh, I really like that look. Um, adding some green now. I'm using all of my like most favorite colors. Let's talk about that for a second. My pink is uh, Bright Rose from Holbein. It's my ride or die pink. Love it. Most days, that's my pink of choice. <laughs> Um, my yellow today is Nickel Azo Yellow. I really love it for its kind of golden, earthy, transparent, intense, but still you can get it to be quite softer tone. And I also love it mixed with pretty much all my other colors, and I will be mixing my colors later. This is another thing uh, that I want to talk about, and we'll get to that a little bit later. So. Blue is ultramarine blue. That's my go-to blue. And then we have uh, cobalt teal. I think the one I have in my palette now is from Lucas. It's called, it's actually called cobalt turquoise and it's very, very affordable. And then my green here, the green of the day is Daniel Smith olive green, which I love. And now I'm adding next to my teal, a little bit of a mixture of the um, my yellow and my pink. And this is another thing I would say is kind of a good way to, I would probably, if you're struggling to find your go-to primaries, then maybe try creating a little scale of the mixtures that they make, and then maybe choose the primaries that make the most amount of mixtures that you love. So for me, when I mix my yellows and pinks, I tend to love most of those colors in between and the same goes for my other colors uh, most of the time so that kind of helps me and I also really choose colors that I love in their pure form and in their mixed uh, form and I you know you could probably keep adding colors like straight from the tube colors to this painting and I will be adding a couple more but I also encourage you to explore some mixes and I don't do a ton of it in this particular case just because the um, I think the whole point of this painting sorry that you can't see the top I'm doing my best <laughs> is to kind of keep it kind of bright and simple and so I don't want to overdo it but because I feel like the pink and the yellow are my main colors here I did explore some of the mixtures that I can create. And these two make beautiful uh, kind of corally colors together. So I am adding that you'll see in certain areas just to amplify this, give a little bit more of a color variety. Again, I want things to look um, simple, but not too simple. So it's always a balance. And sometimes I just need a little bit more variation in color um, to get to where I want to go. So you didn't really think I would paint something without cobalt violet, right? So here's my cobalt violet. Uh, this one is Rembrandt's version and it's lovely and it granulates beautifully. And I do like how it looks next to my pink. So I added a little bit of it. It's again, one of those colors that I love in mixtures. I love on its own but it can't get a bit much for me. So it's all about the balance. I usually tolerate more pink than the cobalt violet. And here you can see I'm going in with a second layer. So this really, you have to be careful with this. If you're too heavy handed, you might kind of get a really 
opaque, dead, flat look. Um, with this pink, I would say I have to be careful. So I'm trying not to overdo it. I want to add just a little bit more real estate of the pink. So I'm just adding a little bit more. And again, creating those areas of interest, those variations within that big pink blob. <laughs> so you can do that by adding another layer, another glaze. It intensifies the color. Again, be careful. You might lose the light. And um, these like bright pinks, they tend to, you think of them as like really bright colors, but if you actually take a picture and turn it into black and white, you would see that many of these pinks and reds uh, actually have much darker values than you think. And that should be taken under consideration because it just affects the overall uh, look. So here we are. And now I'm kind of thinking what else this painting needs. Now, I finished this rather quickly. I didn't speed up or cut out any of the process. Uh, so you can see this in its entirety, but this was also made for the purpose of this video. And probably if I made it just for my own, you know, enjoyment, uh, I would take my time a little bit more, I'd probably step away for a little bit longer and maybe add some more details. But uh, again, I just wanted to keep it simple. And, and so I'm not saying that I stopped where I would usually stop or if I was, yeah, maybe I'll go back in the future and add more is what I want to say. But um, I'm trying to just find that balance between keeping it fresh, bright, light, and kind of loose, uh, not overworked, but still having a lot of interesting things going on. So I had to add a little bit Naples yellow next to my cobalt violet. These are two colors that I adore. I love them together. I love them apart. I love them next to each other. And they are complementary colors, yellow and purple. Uh, and they really make each other kind of vibrate and pop. And there's particular two, Naples Yellow and Cobalt Violet, make the most gorgeous mixtures, which I will explore in a little bit. So talking about mixtures. Um, oh, and again, I'm just here. You can see I'm adding a very, very delicate little glaze on top of that uh, Cobalt Teal with the Naples yellow, and this gives me a little bit of green uh, where those two colors overlap. So again, making sure the edges are nice and attractive. <laughs> so there are a few more uh, minutes to this video, and you'll see that not a lot changes. Uh, as the painting kind of progresses, I do less and less and kind of think more and more. And I continue to think about it. And as I'm like editing this video and editing the photos and everything, I also uh, took a picture of the painting as it is now. And, you know, I crop it nicely. And that really gives me an opportunity to look at it and uh, recognize any major issues. And I did see that I probably could go a little bit more into all that white space with a little bit more color. And I might go back and do that uh, just to make something that I love. And so, yeah, the, the point is that it's not necessarily simple or fast and you might have to like paint a bunch of these to make something that you love. But I hope that you will try to do something like this. I hope that you might consider uh, painting with watercolors or creating paintings that are kind of a part of a general um, design aesthetic or scheme and not necessarily pieces that are meant to kind of stand on their own, but rather bring um, like a color scheme together in a room or add a design element or a pop of color. Uh, so you can absolutely use your watercolors like this. And I personally love that idea. I think it really speaks to me because 
Uh, I have such strong feelings about colors and the way it makes me feel, then the whole concept of creating artwork or paintings or just like pieces that uh, are meant to, you know, be in a specific space and invoke certain emotions, um, bring certain color schemes together, that really speaks to me. And uh, I can see that definitely taking a more central place in creating uh, pieces of artwork with kind of keeping in mind a certain design aesthetic or, you know, maybe like creating specific paintings to certain rooms in my house. Um, this is now a little bit kind of off topic or I guess maybe not really, but it's not directly connected to watercolors. It's just that we've um, moved into our house where we're living about 10 years ago. My daughter was uh, then three years old. And then three years after we moved, we had our second daughter. And somehow it has taken us and, you know, we've always had a somewhat like a tight budget. Uh, I'm home with my kids and um, I don't have like a, a set uh, income working for myself. And for years I hardly had any income. And so we didn't really have the, the time or will to kind of, or money <laughs> to invest in our home. And it kind of felt like a student home for a really long time, just because we, we just needed things to, you know, uh, play a function. And I feel like now slowly, slowly in the last year or two, uh, we've also started paying a bit more attention to like the aesthetic of our house. And, and so I really want that to kind of play a bigger role in the art that I create and maybe create like specific pieces for specific areas in the house. So if this is something that sounds interesting to you, uh, let me know. I definitely would like also to have videos that are more like, you know, project based, like start to finish project with a specific goal and a specific strategy and maybe specific materials. Uh, I just know that I enjoy these kind of videos, like, you know, seeing something made from start to finish and how it fits into like having a very clear starting point and a very clear end point uh, is something I like to see how things come together from the very beginning to the finishing stages. So I really hope I will include more of that. And that is it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you soon in another one. Take care. Bye bye.